Diablo 4 Season 4 has been out for almost a week now, and after getting to level 100, working through the pit, clearing all the bosses, I wanted to put together a full endgame guide of what to do after you hit World Tier 4, to take you from like a fresh level 60, 70 in basic ancestral gear, a bit lost, to getting max 925 gear, fully masterworked, and some really overpowered uniques from the bosses to go along with it. So you can take on the real endgame content, you know, level 100 nightmare dungeons, getting really far down the pit, taking on the tormented bosses, going through the gauntlet, so let's get into it. And the first step I would say is getting full 925 gear. So your first goal of endgame should be to get a full set of 925, that's max level gear in every single slot. There is no point masterworking your gear, socket in your gear or doing anything fancy or time consuming with your gear until you have it max level. As max level 925 gear will always just be a little bit better than anything underneath it. So here's a couple of good ways to try and get farm out a full set of 925 gear. First up, Nightmare Dungeons. The higher level of mobs, the higher level of the gear that drops. So once you can start fighting around level 95 mobs, you will almost guarantee they'll be dropping 925 gear, pretty much max level gear, to try and push into higher and higher Nightmare Dungeons even if you are not level 100. Tier 41 Nightmare Dungeons will have monsters at level 95, so that's a good place to try and get into and farm. Even if you can't beat the boss at the end, just try and craft a sigil for a, a level 41 dungeon, get in and just farm some elites and they'll start dropping 95 gear. The next way is Helltides. You can get a ton of gear from Helltides as you probably already know, but you can also push the level of the mobs in the Helltides higher with the new item, the Profane Mine Cage. So same as with Nightmare Dungeons, if you're only around level 80, 85, you would use a Profane Mine Cage and everything in the Nightmare Dungeon goes 10 levels above what it already is. So this is a really good way to boost the level of the mobs, but also boost the level of the drops, meaning you'll get much more 95 drops. And these um, these Profane Mine Cages come from the Iron Wolves quest. They drop in the Helltides. So there's some good ways to get the gear early, as well as the World Boss check when that's up. That's a good way to get some 95 gear. And then once you hit 100, everything drops 95 gear. So just keep farming and try and get the great graphics rolls. Use your obols at the Curiosity Place. Try and get some like even better gear. But the base 925 gear with good stats will take you a very long way. Okay, once you have 925 gear, the next big massive jump in power is to get your gear tempered. Tempering is a new system in Season 4 that lets you add new affixes of your choice to your gear. As you play, little scrolls will drop and click on them and you'll learn new tempering recipes. Head to the blacksmith, click on the tempering icon and start tempering your gear. The best thing about Ancestral World Tier 4 gear is you can have two tempers on each item. Tempering is huge. It gives you direct power-ups to your build that are very significant. You can choose fire damage, ice damage, damage over time, vulnerable damage, size of your abilities can grow. You can get levels of your abilities increase, like more skill points, so a certain ability will be stronger. You get really powerful stuff here, so start rolling these tempers as soon as you can. And on top of this, there is a chance that they can fail. You can only temper an item so many times, so you could get a bad, you could get the perfect item and the temper could just not work on it, and you need to get that item again. So it's really good to temp your items early and get used to the system and just make them more powerful. It's cheap to do, doesn't take many materials, so I would temper everything. And then if you need to replace it, re-temper it. But yeah, this is, once you start tempering your entire gear set, you're going to see a significant boost in damage and whatever you're trying to achieve, Nightmare Dungeons, the pit, you'll be able to go further with tempered gear. Okay, once you have 925 tempered gear, it's time to look at masterworking. To unlock masterworking, you have to be a level 46 Nightmare Dungeon. Level 46 Nightmare Dungeons have monsters of level 100. If you don't have a sigil that high, you can go to the Occultist and craft one in the 40 to 50 range and hope you land on a 46 or above, or you can roll one in the 50 plus range if you think you can do it. Okay, once you've completed a level 46 Nightmare Dungeon, you will unlock the masterworking system at the Blacksmith, and you will unlock the pit or the intro quest to the pit in Keragar. This is a new repeatable dungeon type content in season four. Now, the reason you need the pit is because this is where the materials come but masterworking. So yeah, as soon as you've done that, head into the pit. If you can beat a level 46 Nightmare Dungeon, you can probably complete the first level of the pit pretty easy. And just keep testing yourself. Every time you complete one level of the pit, you can go in a few levels higher. So there's a timer, you beat the timer within a good range, and you can go from a level one to a level three. And just keep pushing it and see how far you can get. See how, see how much of this resource you can farm. The way masterworking works is every time you masterwork a piece of gear, every affix on that piece of gear grows by 5%, which is why it's so important at the end game. It does this three times, and then on the fourth upgrade, it will upgrade one affix by 25%. And the reason the pit is so important is because the materials to upgrade are locked behind the different levels of the pit. So for the first four masterworks that you do, you need Obducite, which comes from pit levels one to 30. And then if you want to upgrade, say upgrade five, six, seven, and eight, you need something called Ingolith, 
which starts dropping from level 31 to 60. So a huge part of your progression now, your end game progression is going to be tied around progressing through the pit. So once you have a full set of gear that you're happy with, you'd go into the pit to like level 30 and just keep farming a ton of Obdesite and get all of your gear to master working level four. Then you can push further into the pit. You'll be strong enough to push further into the pit. And then you can start farming this, this new item that can upgrade your gear through master working five plus. So that's a huge part of your progression. While you're doing this, you should also still be going into Nightmare Dungeons because that is how you upgrade your glyphs. Level 15 increases the radius of the glyph and they go to a max of 21, which all gives you stat increases in the Paragon board. So I would definitely keep doing this as you're doing the pit and master working. It's kind of a whole system. You jump between going to the pit, master working your gear, going to a Nightmare Dungeon, getting your glyphs leveled up. Just That's like a big gameplay loop that you'll be doing for a long time. Okay, the other thing that you can do is try and get uniques. It has never been easier in Diablo 4 to get uniques than in Season 4. Uniques have completely built the final effects, and each of the big bosses has like a loot table of uniques that they drop. So I'd suggest if you're if you're new and you're following a build guide and it tells you you need a certain unique, I would just Google where that unique comes from and then go farm that boss. All the boss locations are discovered, they're, they're in the same place all the time, so you can just go to that location and farm that boss. I'd say every boss should be soloable. If you're level 100 with tempered gear, some have tricky mechanics, but most bosses especially with the power boost we got in season four are very, very doable. If you're not following a guide and you just want to go get some uniques and you just want to see what drops and you want to learn it that way, just go to all the different rooms that you see here, all the different dungeons with the little horns that, that, that these are the dungeons with the boss in, just go to them and fight the boss and they will drop random uniques for you. Each boss requires summoning materials to summon it once. And there are six bosses each that require a different item to summon. So all the things you've been finding that sort of just drop into your inventory, living steel, distilled fear, exquisite blood, all that stuff, each one is for a different boss. So find out what unique you're after and go summon the boss or just go fight them all and see what you get. You get a ton of these materials from doing the Iron Wolves campaign. Once you get to like the later levels of the Iron Wolves uh, rewards, they will drop so much boss materials that you can go and pretty much do a, a circle and fight every single boss a couple of times. So you should already have a ton if you've been doing Nightmare Dungeons, if you've been doing Hell Ties, which you probably will have, you'll have even more. So definitely go fight them and summon them and, and see what they're like because it's it's fun if nothing else and you'll get uniques. Two of the bosses as well, uh, Burial and Andariel, they even drop, they have a chance to drop Uber uniques. So I, I went into one with a friend and an Uber unique dropped on the first, first fight we had. So... That's something you can try and do as well because they are really fun and really strong. But that's that's kind of the that's kind of the end game. Get your 925 gear, temper it, get down into the pit and start grinding the pit. Start working on your master working gear and farming uniques, farming uber uniques. Get your glyphs done and just work on your character, work on your build, get stronger and enjoy the game. That that is the end game loop. There is no there's no raids or any crazy big end game thing you have to worry about it's just working on yourself getting your gear better and seeing what you can do once you're absolutely decked out just test yourself see how deep you can get in the pit see how hard and how what, what score you can get in the gauntlet try and beat the tormented level 200 bosses to, to flex but that's it that's the end game i'm finding it super fun really rewarding and it feels probably the best it's ever felt right now in season four i think they've done a good job of really adding different layers to the end game. I think it's really fun. I hope you're enjoying it too. And I hope this guide has given you some some structure if say you're new to Diablo or you're you're just new to trying to get to the end game. Maybe you played casually in the past or you never got to World Tier 4 and now you wanna you wanna push to 100 and see what's there. Hopefully this has helped. If it has, consider subscribing to the channel. I make a ton of Diablo guides, builds, content, and then out of season I also cover other RPGs and MMOs. But that's it from me. Take care and I'll catch you in the next one.